this is fun. This is yours. Okay, we're on. Hey. Welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the Planning Commission. Today's date is Wednesday, March 2nd, 2016, 5 p.m. And we have Commissioner Landrigan lead the pledge. Sure. Pledge. Wait, go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we get a roll call, please? Planning Commissioners Astorian. Here. Landrigan. Here. Manukian. Here. And Chairperson Lee. Here. The report regarding the posting of agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on Wednesday, February 24th, 2016, on the bulletin board outside City Hall and on the city's website. Thank you. And can we get approval of the uh, minutes of the last meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. Move and second. So passed. Do we have any oral communication besides uh, the case we have today? I see none. We'll move on to the uh, zoning appeals. Oral business, we have none. New business. Subject location is 2284 Honolulu Avenue, the Starbucks coffee shop. And it's the administrative use permit case number PAUP 1518. 910. Can we have a staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Um, as you stated, this project is located at 2284 Honolulu Avenue, the Starbucks, located on the um, southeast corner of Ocean View and Honolulu Avenue. And um, this project today actually has two appeals before you, so we'll be hearing from both appellants this evening. What I'd like to do is briefly just, first of all, just go over the location. That would be my preliminary introduction. Then we'll hear from the appellants, and then we'll come back to staff to hear what the uh, staff responds to the arguments presented in the appeal. So as I stated, the project is located on the southeast corner of um, Ocean View in Honolulu. This is in the Montrose Shopping Park. As you know, this area is well known for its diverse retail, restaurant services, uh, frequent uh, heavily um, pedestrian traffic that exists. And uh, the applicant is proposing at the Starbucks to include the additional ex ancillary use of alcoholic beverages. Currently, Starbucks does serve, as you know, uh, it's a fast food restaurant because it has more than eight seats, and that's the way it's classified in our zoning code. So again, this, this particular location is located in the commercial retail zone. Uh, again, it is commercial, so this proposed use and the ancillary service of alcoholic beverages is allowed in this zone. Um, there are two entitlements already on file for this location. Originally, when this um, Starbucks was open, or prior to opening, there was a uh, conditional use permit approved with conditions specifically for the use for a fast, for a fast food restaurant in this zone. Um, there's also a parking reduction permit that was also approved because the project at the time did not or even currently, would not comply with the current or for the parking requirements for that particular use. So those two entitlements are currently active. Um, and again, they were approved originally when this um, business started operating. Um, that would conclude my presentation. There are exhibits on the panels behind you. If there are any questions for staff regarding the, the use itself, any of the entitlements, I'd be more than happy to help you. If not, um, we could go move, move forward with the uh, presentation of the appellants. I, I have a question for staff. Uh, they're not certain, well, this is kind of weird for me to look <laughs> at and speak, but let's, let's do it this way. They're not serving alcohol at this time, do they? No. Yeah. So, Mr. Lito, what you're saying is that um, we'll hear from the appellants first, then you will present your uh, Arguments. response you know, for that. <clears throat> Now, for housekeeping purposes, um, you mentioned that we have a conditional use permit already issued on this premise. Uh, so, you know, instead of uh, going with the modification of the CUP, it's uh, not a modification. It's it's the CUP is, and I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to clarify that the conditional use permit on file strictly for the use, mm -hmm. the fast food 
establishment, a restaurant establishment. What we're hearing today are two appeals of the administrative use permit. The administrative use permit was recently approved in December of 2015. It was, again, done at a staff level under our new streamlined um, process. And uh, we did receive several letter of letters, both in opposition and um, in favor. Ultimately, he, the hearing officer approved the administrative use permit with conditions. And the administrative use permit was strictly for the on-site sales, service, and consumption of alcoholic beverages at this establishment. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. Well, we, it's, it's just for clarification. It's only beer and wine. Correct. It's not all alcoholics. No, it's beer and wine only. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would yes. like to ask a question, um, a couple of questions, because uh, you will answer it, and I hope that uh, those addressing the commission will also, uh, if they choose, can answer this. We got a number of emails today. One of them says that <clears throat> in the past, Starbucks has made representations that they would not serve alcohol uh, at this location. I want that... I want somebody to comment on that, uh, one way or another, whether that's true or not. Uh, secondly, um, uh, the email contains a representation to the effect that only three other locations serving an alcohol in the state of California have been approved of under the Starbucks banner. I, I, I would like that as well. I think those are really good questions, and they're good questions for the appellant for Starbucks, representing Starbucks today. Um, I'm not uh, privy to any of those. I understand that. Okay. I just wanted to put it to you just in Perfect. case you knew the answer. And if you didn't, whoever speaks, feel free. you have any questions? No, I don't. And then uh, Ms. Tullier, I have one more question. Sure. Um, and that is um, because that has you know, nothing to do with the uh, four items that's before us for the opponent number one, and that is in your report, uh, in the report it says this is uh, a little higher than usual crime uh, reported in this area, 200 some odd versus 170 uh, in the citywide. Uh, but what it does not mention is that what is the crime report related to? So is it related to alcohol uses because we have so much concentration of the alcohol uh, serving uh, businesses in the area? So do you have any? Uh, those are very good questions. Um, actually, those are crime-related. Are you specifying the the what the report states that it's in part one wine, uh, excuse me part one crime statistics for the census there were 203 crimes above the citywide average of 173 you would like to know exactly what these crimes were related to correct so why is it higher than okay other, other areas? um pd is here in the audience this evening so if you'd like you can ask the question to them now or if you'd like to proceed with the hearing and ask for them, those questions to be answered during the public testimony period, but definitely um, those are PD questions that they could answer the for you. Commissioners don't mind because this is not part of the appellant's uh, issues here, so I'd like to hear uh, the <coughs> response from the <coughs> police department. No. Mr. Chair, oh. you would open the public hearing, You're receiving testimony on the matter at this point rather than just a staff report. Thank you very much. Thank you. So housekeeping. Now it's open. <laughs> Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Commission, Carl Povolitis, Deputy Police Chief. Uh, that would be all part one crime, so it's uh, covering theft, robbery, homicide, uh, auto theft, um, missing a couple in, in their burglaries. So it compares part one crimes in that census tract to the average uh, part one crimes in the other census tracts in the city. So it is not necessarily alcohol related or specifically. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, if I may ask you a question. Uh, maybe staff can ask. I, I'm not sure if you would know about this. Have we, um, has the city approved and issued any um, licenses for alcoholic co consumption since December 10, 2015, in that area, in that census? Do we know that? Uh, personally, since we have different planners, uh, obviously in our department, I have not. I'm not aware if other planners have recently, by 2005, December of 2015, um, unless... Roger's going to check for us. I know in the past we have, within the last few years, because I, as a matter of fact, worked on uh, the former um, 
now I'm drawing a blank, the restaurant on the corner of uh, the Rocky Cola Cafe, the former Rocky Cola. We worked on that, and they did a CUP at the time when they were still there. I know there were a restaurant across the street recently. I don't know if it was an AUP, Benetois, I believe it's called. It's located on the um, southwest corner of uh, Verdugo Boulevard, across the street from, like, the Black Cow and from the Rocky Cola Cafe. They recently, as a matter of fact, received, um, I believe it's an AUP or a CUP, but we'll double-check on that for you. And so if if it is true that they are capable of serving alcohol and that was that is a recent uh, <coughs> event, has, did, did anybody object to Benetois, is that the name? or I, I believe so. Did anybody object to them not having or having alcohol-related uh, licenses? I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. We'd have to look at the file to see if we received anything. Thank you, sir. Uh, for, the, for the record, I don't know if you uh, stated your name. I did. Right? Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> He's only deputy chief of city of Glen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, chief. Um, Chairman Lee, yes. just to clarify, um, because we have two appellants, it would be the applicant appellant who would go first, and then the neighborhood appellant that would go second. Yes, thank you. <coughs> so, applicant appellant, um, you know, you could present it as a team uh, or individual. Uh, you have 15 minutes uh, to speak. So, I believe it's Keith, Mr. Glassman. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. I I'm Keith Glassman. I'm here on behalf of Starbucks Coffee. Um, with us what, from Starbucks Coffee is our district manager, Tim Douglas, and we have a store manager, uh, Alejandro Palamo, from um, our Pasadena store. He is the store manager of Pasadena. So he's here to, to uh, they're both here to answer additional questions as they come up. Um, so um, I wanted to, uh, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. I wanted to thank staff. Um, uh, because it's been, it's, it's been a long road. We, we applied for this last year, uh, I think in August, and uh, milk has been great, the whole staff's been great, Office of Economic Development. Everyone's very, very uh, cordial and supportive. And, uh, you know, during this time, we've done a lot of outreach. We've outreached to the, um, you know, the, the Montrose uh, Business Park Association. We've met with them a couple times. And so we're here tonight um, grateful that you did approve our AUP. <coughs> We have no problem with most of those conditions. The, the AUP, um, you know, we're, we're grateful for that. We know it's a privilege. We know it's revocable. Um, but we wanted to ask you um, to allow Starbucks to operate the way it was intended. And uh, we have over, to answer your question, 52 <coughs> stores in California uh, in operation. So it's not three, it's 52, with another 30 coming online. That serve beer and wine. Serve beer and wine. Okay. We, we have thousands of stores in California. Don't get me wrong. Uh, so 52 currently in operation that serve beer and wine with no issues. Uh, uh, so that number, we have 30 more coming online. Recently, uh, we just got approval for Pacific Palisades in, in L.A., which is a, I wanted to go into that later. But what I wanted to ask you is uh, what, what we're asking for tonight is a softening of the conditions. So we have the conditions. Condition number six uh, stipulates uh, we requested originally 12 noon to closing for the service of alcohol. After meeting with the community, after meeting with the uh, <clears throat> and, and discussions, we, we dropped that down to 4 p.m. start to closing. And 4 p.m. To, to closing is our core hours. That is our, our sweet spot that all these, the 52 operational stores that are currently uh, in California, they operate anywhere from 12 noon to closing. And a, a, a lot of them will operate from 4 p.m. to closing. And 4 p.m. is our minimum. Uh, it was conditioned for 5 p.m. for Montrose. And we'd like to ask for 5 p.m. to 10, that is. We're asking for an additional hour starting at 4 and an additional hour ending at 11. So 4 to 11 with last call at 10.30 p.m. So it's an hour, essentially it's an hour and a half we're asking. So we're asking for a softening of that condition number six. Um, we also are asking that um, condition number um, two, oh, excuse me, condition number 10. Condition number 10 has to do with the sale of service of, of wine and beer be available only in conjunction with food service. 
Um, we agree that you know the food service will be there the whole time Starbucks is in operation. What we're having difficulty with is compelling a customer to, uh, as a conditional of to, to have beer and wine, a condition to, to buy food with it. So they can't get the beer and wine unless they buy food. So we don't do that in any of the approved stores in California. We don't do that in, in any of the, the 283 uh, stores that are opening or operating in, in the United States. We haven't had a condition like that. So it's an awkward situation to ask um, a customer, you can have the beer and wine, but you've got to buy food with it. Well, we, what we'll do is the inclination when people come to Starbucks and buy any beverage is to buy something as just an instinct. It's sort of a, you know, it goes along with, with a, a drink and a, and a, and a food. So what we're asking to do is soften that condition such that we will allow Starbucks to operate or, or sell beer and wine in conjunction with food service, which we'll have, but not take out, taking out the word only. So it offers people choice. People like that freedom of choice. We think that people will – we don't know where people – when they come into Starbucks, if they're going to dinner or coming from dinner, so we have no way of knowing <coughs> what their appetite is. It, they will probably have a, uh, a bite to eat. Uh, the actual beer and wine does come automatically with a bowl of a snacks, of like a pumpkin seeds, and it's refillable. So automatically that comes with the drink, but we're going to pr- be promoting and, and asking people, this, uh, this wine or beer pairs very well with a goat cheese flatbread. So we're going to be promoting it in that way, but we're not compelling people to buy. So that's the, that's the modification of, the, of that condition. Um, the uh, regarding table service condition number eighteen. Originally, um, we, were, we, were, we were we were we were appealing that, but actually, the way Starbucks does operate its stores throughout the country uh, is that it, they do provide provide table service. So, Starbucks partners will bring the drink to the person uh, who uh, bought it to the mm-hmm. table, and that'll be the person who had originally showed their ID. Be the same person. So we're fine with the condition number 18. We have no appeal or no issue with that. Condition 21 is uh, that no live entertainment be allowed. And I wanted to ask this, that this is, if, if it's not within uh, your ability to allow this in some way or working with staff to allow it, we're fine with the condition as is that we will not have live entertainment. The reason for the appeal of that condition is, is occasionally we like to have an acoustic guitar, someone, a local artist come in and on a special event basis only, on occasional basis, and, and play acoustic guitar in a low-key, non-amplified way. Uh, or have, you know, sometimes a, on a seasonal basis, we have the Girl Scouts come in and sing Christmas songs or something like that. That's the kind of entertainment we were talking about when we think of live entertainment, not rock and roll, loud, uh, crazy stuff. So that's sort of what, that's what we're asking for you tonight. And um, we're also asking, I don't know if you've got my email, but we're asking that you, you base your decision on findings of fact um, in that we have a Starbucks in operation. We have one in, in Pasadena. And what we know is whatever we tell you about the Starbucks program tonight, the evenings program, how it's run, how, how we're well trained, the best way of really knowing and, and understanding what the Starbucks program is is to actually visit a store. So we're hoping that, that if you have an opportunity to visit a store, you'll see that it operates exactly, uh, an evenings program store operates exactly the same way as a a non-alcohol, non-evening store. <clears throat> the only difference is the menu. But the atmosphere, what goes on when you walk into the store, it's, a, it's, it's identical. So I wanted to convey that to you, and I also wanted to tell you, I appreciate your consideration tonight, um, I wanted to tell you that the concerns, I mean, there's a lot of people here with a lot of concerns about uh, children, the teens, teenagers, who frequent Starbucks. And we, at Starbucks, we share those same concerns. I mean, this program has been in, around for five years. Uh, there have been no issues with the commingling of, of, of families, children, parents, all coming to Starbucks, and they still do in the, in the evening stores, with no, no issues whatsoever. <coughs> so we want to tell you that the concerns of exposing children to alcohol at Starbucks has not been an issue for Starbucks or for the people coming there, and they continue to come there. So. I know that, again, that's a, uh, the issues of the community are our concerns, too. We've taken great lengths to train uh, <coughs> Starbucks um, uh, folks, Starbucks uh, partners. Uh, we monitor what goes on in the store. Uh, uh, everyone goes through a very rigorous training program uh, at Starbucks. Uh, all, the, all the actual Starbucks partners who work in these stores are 21 and older, and they go through a very intense training program. 
so a lot of considerable thought and effort has gone into the design and implementation of the program. It's been around for, again, for five years. We think this actually, this location is a great fit for the community. Um, it's a walking district. People come and park. They just not only go to Starbucks, they'll go to, out to eat, they'll go to the theater. Um, it might be a, a stopover to and from one of their, uh, uh, when they park, they'll have several destinations as they go. So we feel it is actually a good fit. About your question about what was promised three or four, three years ago, I don't know what anything was. I wasn't there. It was actually before my time. Um, I'm hearing that from the community that Starbucks said they would not have alcohol. And again, I don't have any, uh, that was again three years ago before my time on this. And if it was, I don't think it was in the, in the effect that Starbucks program three years ago was just in its infancy. So maybe this store was not on the radar for the evening's program. But obviously things change. And this is, a, you know, Starbucks is looking at the site as a, a, a great location. And we're asking the commission to allow Starbucks the opportunity to prove itself. Um, again, it, it's, a, it's a great program. We think it's a good fit. And I'll be glad to answer any questions the community <coughs> has about these concerns that, that you're going to hear about tonight. And I want to know, I have reached out to uh, the appellant the, from the community. We did speak twice. Uh, Kim and I spoke twice. I sent her some information. I hope, I hope you got it. We just got it last week. Okay. So, you know, Kim is very passionate, and she has all the people in, 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 in Glendale are very passionate. We feel this is a win-win for everybody, actually. Uh, once the program is seen and it's, and it's operating, it becomes a non-issue. As you can see in Pasadena, uh, in other stores, it just becomes the, it's the fear and the perception of what's going to happen as opposed to the reality of what does happen. So I wanted to convey that to you, and I, and I again, appreciate your consideration. Um, if there's anything I can answer now or later? Questions for the appellant? None of your um, um, other Starbucks stores in Glendale, from Glendale Avenue to Stalker and Central, I know them because I drink a lot of coffee. For, no, they don't. None of them serve alcohol, no. right? No, and, they ha and we haven't applied for that. For the license, this will be the first one. Yes, Ms. But Pasadena, obviously, other nearby jurisdictions do. What is the typical square footage of one of your evening Starbuckses? Because I've been to some and ranges, yeah. and they. Which ones have you? I've been in Washington D.C. Oh, okay. so, to several of them. And, so I would, but they're uh, all bigger than this. So I was they just range. I mean, just because of the footprint of the California stores, the real estate obviously is more expensive. Um, they range from anywhere from, I would say, 1,800 square feet to 2,500 square feet, something in that range. So they're, they're, they're a small footprint. They're not huge stores. They're manageable. They're monitorable in, in that, you know, we're be able to see and service the stores, and that answers your question. Not quite, but gives me an idea. I mean, a, a average range of this to size? 18, well, 18 typically to when you're a, a franchise, you have a, a, a footprint that you go out when you oh. do something. And you yeah. would say, if I'm starting a new Starbucks and I'm going to make it an evening Starbucks, I would use, uh, I would look for a footprint that would be this because I know what my operations are. That was the answer I was hoping for. The, do you have the, that? The, the newer the newer Starbucks range are a little bigger. They range about maybe like 2,500 square feet. The range, you know, we have existing stores that have their foot that right. already have their footprint. We can, mm -hmm. if it's possible to expand, we do, but <clears throat> that's a range. Okay, thank you. I think what Commissioner Landrigan was trying to drive at was that when you have a small Starbucks uh, footprint where you have more takeouts than uh, the sit down, you know, do you consider those locations to be also a uh, candidate for this type of program? For, for the smaller Starbucks, we wouldn't consider a 1200 square foot Starbucks. For sure. There's some, there's some original Starbucks out there that are very small. We wouldn't consider a, a, a Starbucks that was like 1,200 square feet or 1,000 square feet. Do you have a company policy that has a list of this, attributes that you find appropriate for the evening Starbucks? Um, you know, a pedestrian-friendly kind of an e a place that's already busy in the evenings, that has an evening, already has evening traffic, and the people who would go there might be have, have it's the same customers who go there now they go there for coffee and uh, if, they, if a group of people is coming into that Starbucks they might say hey, you know I'm gonna have we're all gonna we're all gonna have coffee but we're gonna um, um, we're going to oh you know I see that you offer beer and wine that's that sounds like it's gonna be a good uh, fit for me so it's a, it's a menu option it's additional menu option with great food by the way uh, the, the evenings program is not just about the beer and wine it's about the pairing with all the the great foods and I think I sent you the menu in your uh, second packet in your packet but 
Uh, to my right is Spencer Regnery holding up our, our menu and some of our dishes, pictures of our stuff. So these are tasty, well thought out, very, you know, a lot of food science kind of went into it because uh, Starbucks doesn't have a, we don't cook it on site. This is all uh, the convection microwave product. But it's really tasty and it's equivalent to some, some great bites that you'd find at a, a higher end restaurant. And the whole idea is to pair great beverages with great food. And again, we're not forcing this on people. People come in for coffee. We don't force it or, or suggest it. It's like if they're interested in it, we have these, this menu. It's a basically expanded menu option. Food's questions? available all day, by the way. The food is available all day during the evening. <coughs> Clarification. So are you withdrawing your appeal on condition number 18? Which is the third I one. I believe so. 6, 10, and Double 21. Check. But they won't so 18, offer. I'm withdrawing. Oh, you're withdrawing that one. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm, I can withdraw, tw you know, if 21's an issue, I can withdraw that immediately. So in other words, 18 and 21 are a non-issue a non for Starbucks. If, if live entertainment's a problem the way we're posing it, mm -hmm. then 21's out, 18's out. And the only thing we'd be looking for is the extra hour uh, in condition number six. We'd like to start at 4 p.m. to closing, half hour, you know, half hour before closing, last call. What's closing? Right now it's 11. So 10.30 would be our last call. Um, and then we'd like to, um, uh, you know, have, I, th I think the mo more pressing thing for Starbucks is we don't want to force someone to buy something that they don't want to. So if someone wants to just simply have a beer for a while, eat some peanuts, enjoy the atmosphere for a while, we think that they should have the right to do that. But we are, we do have this extended menu. We have a regular menu and the enhanced menu, and we will, we will promote it. I mean, that's the idea is we want to have people come in and suggest pairings to them. So when customers come in, they'll say, well, I'd like to try the Cabernet, and that pairs well with the, um, you know, the mac and cheese ruffle, uh, truffle or whatever they're going to buy. So. I have a question. Um, you know, when you start serving beer and wine, uh, you know, you'll have customers coming in after dinner or something like that right. to, to enjoy sure. beer and wine. But you also attract uh, some customers uh, that who might be already intoxicated uh, to drink more uh, at your location. Good what question. type of program you have and how do you control that? I'd like to maybe call on Alejandro to answer that. Yeah, he's our store manager, Pasadena. Uh, you need to state, state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Alejandro Cuomo. I'm the store manager of Old Town Pasadena. We had one instant, so we launched in July of last year. Uh, we had one instant where a customer came in and it looked like he had something to drink already. Um, my barista brought it to my attention. We didn't feel comfortable serving him, so we gave him a free coffee on the house, had him sit down, then gave him a glass of water and told him we wouldn't serve him, and we were really sorry about this situation, but we didn't feel comfortable. And he just left, and he was fine with it. So uh, that's, usually, that's what we've been told to do, and that's kind of the training behind it is divert the situation, have them sit down, go serve them, go over the top, surprise and delight, you know, take the attention away from the alcohol and go towards the coffee or help them get back to where they need to be. So. So he was a nice customer, but what happens if you have a you know, customer, customer that was not cooperating? Yeah, so if uh, the training is if a customer gets irate, you know, we tell them right away that uh, we don't feel comfortable serving them and that uh, we apologize about that. And uh, we ask them that they can get something else, but if they're trying to get an alcoholic beverage, we won't serve them. And so if they would, you know, progress or something, we would just call the... PD or there's guides in Pasadena, but I don't think there's guides in Glendora, but the PD would probably be called. Can we have Mr. Glassman back sure. up here? Um, that was one store that um, that we just heard from. Now you have 50 some other locations now in operation. Right. Uh, and you have not had any, we haven't any heard one any, incident. We haven't heard with, of any incidents with not only customers of that nature, again, reported incidents, we haven't had any uh, PD incidents, vice incidents, or ABC incidents. So I wanted to just touch on that, that we're under scrutiny not only from internal controls, internal training, which is very rigorous. Uh, we have, we're under the, uh, the monitoring of the city, the city vice, uh, Lieutenant Bickell and his, his group. We also have the ABC that does sting operations. So in every, kind of from all angles, we're at our best to make sure these things don't happen. And control, and control what happens at Starbucks. Our reputation, Starbucks' reputation, is on the line. 
and they've made a huge investment in this as far as five years ago starting these stores in Seattle. They worked well, no incidents. So they're coming into California, and they've been well received in California, no incident. So that is a track record we are, you know, we want to maintain, and I believe we will maintain. Uh, what, what's not controllable is what, what we have is a person who is already inebriated coming into Starbucks. Uh, even if they were not drunk, if they just came in, they were reckless. We have procedures in place to take care of that, calling PD. The store manager knows what to do. So it doesn't necessarily be someone drunk. It's, it's someone doing anything at all illegal at Starbucks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lero, so how do you want to handle this? Uh, you want to uh, rebut to uh, appellant one, or you want to wait till? We Yeah, we would like to hear from the next appellant. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for your consideration. So now I'd like to call up the second appellant, uh, Kim Matterstai. Matterstai. I'm Kim Matterstai. Good morning. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for hearing us, our side today. Um, we're here to request that you just deny the request for Starbucks to be able to serve beer and wine at the Montrose location entirely. The reason we feel that strongly and compelled um, about this is that is a, that is a youth community, that is a walking community, it's a pedestrian family community. I believe that you know that it's a very um, strong community that embraces its youth with Prom Plus and with the coalition, the CV Drug and Alcohol Coalition, how we try to uh, bring our, our youth together, as there's many here tonight, where they want to be in a healthy environment. There's very little entertainment for the community at large in <clears throat> Presenta Valley. Most of the kids and the families, we go down to Montrose and take our walks. The kids after school will go over to Starbucks, and most of them I'm hearing will save their lunch money and drop about $8 <clears throat> a day at Starbucks after school when they have their... Can't hear me? I could be really loud if I want to. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying not to be. But anyway, so they'll go down and drop about $8 or so um, for, each, for each customer. And I think that Starbucks is being well, a little short-sighted wanting to sell a $12 glass of wine plus the cost of food or a $9 um, glass of craft beer and to protect our children. But more than anything else, I want to bring up a couple points. You did ask about statistics. Um, and I actually did pull some statistics from the, the crime um, site today from the PD. And since January 1, there have been 11 incidents of drunken public, including one drug event. And that's of t as of today. If you'd like to see this report, it's here. Um, also, let's see where we have. There are right now 33 licensed eateries, restaurants, and bars in Montrose. Short little four blocks of Montrose. There, uh, according to the ABC website today, which is updated daily, so today was uh, that was as of yesterday. Actually, there are 33 licensed um, restaurants and eateries. As I said, that is an increase of three since I ran the statistics initially in December, at the end of December. Um, and in regards to the liquor licenses, as in a mini mart or a liquor store, something like the Trader Joe's, that actually has gone down from 10 to 9. So we've, we've acquired two more. We, we've, we're up two. Um, the biggest concern is that we're oversaturated. We're oversaturated with alcohol in that community. I'm a person, I have a glass of wine. I don't oppose drinking. I don't oppose Starbucks. I'm a patron of Starbucks. I just think that this is a bad fit, and so do, again, a lot of people behind me. Um, I do have two petitions that have been circulated, and these are um, stated to please... We, the underside citizens of Presenta Valley, strongly believe that granting Starbucks 2284 Honolulu the authority to serve beer and wine would not be proper fit, nor would it be compatible for our community. In fact, we are concerned that it would be detrimental to our community at large. And there are 129 signatures of adults. And then we have the same petition for our youth. So these kids went out and solicited signatures from their peers in about a week and a half. The kids signed 40 of them. There's 40 signatures on this youth petition. So and the reason that we feel that it could also be detrimental to our community is, as you heard Keith speak, that everyone who works at Starbucks would be 21 and over. There are currently, at present, kids that work at Starbucks that are under 21. When I spoke to him and I asked him what will happen with those people, well, they'll be relocated, or obviously they're going to have to give up the jobs. So for the kid that lives not too far away that has to go, 
walk to work, get off school with their schedule at school, walk to work, get to work on time, 3, 30, 4 o'clock, whatever. Now we'll have to cast a bu- catch a bus somewhere else. Maybe they have to give up their job. Maybe they can't make that schedule. I mean, to me, that's detrimental to the community. So with that, the other thing I'd like to bring to the attention is um, <clears throat> there's a couple other items here. In your conditional response, conditional appeal, it clearly states on page two that you recognize that we are overconcentrated, that the census is overconcentrated for alcoholic services. Adding one more would be detrimental. City Hall Cafe just went out, young retired. She's gone Sunday. There's a Chinese restaurant going in there, great. They're going to serve lunch and dinner. Are they going to apply for a beer and wine license? They're going to apply for an alcohol license? Maybe. What about Henry, where Henry gave up Montrose, Montrose um, Bakery? That's a pretty big location. Are they going to apply? That's owned, that has been um, acquired by Dish. Well, I can't imagine the owners of Dish are not going to apply for a beer and wine. And what about the clothing market? That's empty. Who's going to apply in there? And what's going to happen with Jeff when Jeff takes over or finally activates something at the Rocky Cola? Is that going to be beer and wine too? Are we going to add five more, six more? In my opinion, and those who support me, Starbucks on the corner of Honolulu and Montrose is too small. There are 23 seats on the inside. There are 18 seats on the patio. With regards to visibility, if you have been in there, you can see there is no straight line clear through to the patio. And for a youth person to be able to acquire, you know, a little shared cocktail or drink or something, it's quite doable. I don't see how you could keep an eye on somebody 100% of the time. And I, I have another question, and that would be, in regards to your striking um, the, the rounds of the 15 minutes, Keith, how are they going to monitor that? Because they're, a restaurant is a come and go. It's a constant. You'll have four people on staff. How can they possibly watch that? And how do you also say to somebody, those 23 seats are full, and I know you want your beer, but you got to wait. It just doesn't make sense. It's not a fit. So with regards to that, I'd also like to bring to the attention that um, perhaps Keith isn't aware, that in Napa, California, they protested Starbucks from getting their application through. And the reason so is because they went from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. to noon. They wanted it at noon. Now, who's going to monitor the noon? Once ABC gives them their license, if ABC will, if they comply with the kitchen, confinements. Who's really going to monitor that? I mean, how often do we know of an ABC, um, what's it called, Therese? And I, she, a decoy. She was, my daughter was a decoy at one one point in time. And how, how often will the ABC decoy program be in effect to actually, you know, be there on, to, to identify and to observe anything that's going on? But the other thing, too, so with Napa, Napa shut them down. They didn't get it. They didn't get their license. Nor did Coronado offer, uh, nor did Starbucks get their license in Coronado, California in 2012. What happened with them is very similar as what's happening with us right now. In Coronado, Starbucks approached them, and they did kind of what we're doing. And from the article, May 17, 2012, from the uh, cheat sheet off online, Starbucks states, it is in its letter to Starbucks, this, okay, in its uh, letter to Starbucks, the city noted that a number of young people congregate at the coffee house as they do in Montrose and would be discouraged from doing so if alcohol was served. The Coronado Police Department also protests based on what it believes is an overconcentration of establishments serving alcohol in the area. And it goes on to say, based on, this is Starbucks, Starbucks has declined to pull its liquor license application in Coronado. In an email to city manager Blair, Blair King, Starbucks senior manager of government affairs Kim Winston said, based on our due diligence process and our respect for the, com- the Coronado community, Starbucks took itself selected and proactive actions to pull its application. So why can't you do that for us? I don't get it. I'm sorry. Right now, part of, part of the conditional um, a program that you guys put out with their conditions, part of it is says that there's no school, there's no churches. If you're familiar with Montrose, as I believe most of you are, we all live in this area, and it's a place you love to go, 
you will see that maybe there are no schools or no churches, but let's acknowledge the fact that right across the street from the Starbucks location is what's called Revolution Dance Studio. Revolution Dance Studio sees 1,200 students a, a month. A week. Pardon me, a week. Color Me Mine, right there next door. I talked to the owner today. They serve about, they, they um, service about 100 children a month as well. The martial arts studio is right next door to them. There's another martial arts studio right on the other side on Ocean View across from Copy Network. There's Kids Art. There's Fruyo. That's a huge draw for young Asian families and young families alike. And let's not forget Tom's Toys. Gosh, where do we take our kids of mantras to go buy toys? Tom's, right? We're not going to go to Ross. We go to Tom's. What about the Church of Scientology? They're right around the corner, too. That's a church. Not my church, but it's a church. And then there's Ocean View Learning Center. It's a tutoring center right below on Ocean View on Broadview. These are all within 500 feet of this location that wants to serve alcohol. So we are just asking you that it, you understand that it's a bad fit, and we need to embrace our, our, our kids and our community. <coughs> Our community has faced tragedy. In 1991, there was the prom, and after the prom happened, and I'm not the best storyteller of this story, but after the prom happened, there was alcohol. And one of the, the young ladies went up to her room to sleep, and another person, not from Crescenta Valley High School, but another person came in and shot her to death. The community from that point has rallied around Prom Plus and rallied around our kids so they have a safe environment to be, a place that they can call a good place to be. So we just want to continue on with that. And the other thing, too, is the Crescenta Valley Alcohol and Drug Coalition, which I was on the grassroots founding board of five years ago. We want to be in the forefront and stop bad things from happening to our kids. We want to prevent them. We can't prevent them from experiencing life, but we can prevent things that we can prevent. And we feel that we can make a difference in this. So with that, the other thing I think I want to say is that I spoke to Andre Ortobigian today. He is the Mantra Shopping Park president, I'm sure most of you know. And on page four of this AUP, again, it says that the existing use does not or will, that the existing use does or will serve a public convenience purpose because the operation of a fast food restaurant with on-site alcoholic beverage sales, service and consumption will be consistent for the vision he said, I haven't seen a vision. Where did this come from? I did not see this. This is not part of the Montreal Shopping Park. So I just want to bring out the fact that that, unfortunately, is inaccurate. Then I have a question. Starbucks is, a, is applied for an ABC license type number 41. Well, in that <coughs> definition, it means that, according to their definitions... Of course, they can't have distilled spirits, but must operate and maintain the licensed premises as a bona fide eating place. Must maintain suitable kitchen facilities. That means cutlery, plates, cups, glasses. And must make actual and sustainable sales of meals for consumption on the premises. Miners are allowed in these premises. Maybe they're really a bar. Maybe they need to turn into a bar or saloon, as my husband calls it. You know, saloons sell alcohol and they don't serve coffee. But that would kind of mess them up a little bit because then they couldn't have a minor in there under 21. So really, are they applying for the right thing? And is this the right place for them? I don't agree. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Put this here. I have a question. <coughs> you mentioned... 30 versus an increase of another thir uh, three. Possibly three to five. What period of time was that? Which ones are Do you know which ones they are? You know, I have the where did list. You get, where did you get that information? Off the ABC from? website okay. today. And I actually have a that copy. In that census track, mm -hmm. th there is three additional. And we don't know. If, do you know the... Um, I uh, don't. I don't, don't know, know which the ones they are. I didn't compare the two. I, I threw out the old one because I wanted the most current data. 
Okay. So I have the one so, from I mean, that, today. That could have been a year ago as opposed to... Oh, no, no. These are no, recent. No, I did. I, my husband and I researched the ABC website. Um, I, it might have been the very last of December, very <clears> beginning <throat> of January. And we have been... As If you've been reading the paper, I've been quoting 30. But as of today, I went on the ABC website, abcca.gov, <clears throat> and put in the census track. I think it was 44. And you can search on-site and off-site, and today it pulled up 33 on-site. That's an increase of three. Versus the off-site was, was a number of nine, which is a decrease of one from the statistics at the beginning of the year. Sean, do you have a question? So these were already approved uh, licenses. Are they pending our requests? I uh, emailed Milka. And there's nothing pending, as far as I understand, from my email with her yesterday. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for the speaker? Thank you. Thank you. Do you want these uh, petitions? Yes, please, for the record. Do you want the statistics for the time? Well, if you'd like to turn it in, yeah, it becomes part of the records. Thank you. So may, may I, uh, uh, Mrs. Matters, I, Snag, may I ask you another question, if I may? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So if the Chinese restaurant that is just opening or whatever uh -huh. restaurant is going to start serving <coughs> alcoholic beverage, uh -huh. you will be vociferously against that as well, right? No, not exactly, because that's an eatery and a restaurant. That's why Starbucks is a bad fit. They don't want to do the food. They want to do a confection oven. They don't, according to 41, you know, the consumption sales of the food need to be the same or greater than the sales of alcohol. And they clearly stated, we don't want to compel our people to buy food. We'll give them pumpkin seeds. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Following that, um, that up, I am a little bit familiar with that. So, you know, as you indicated, that a lot of the premises or the <coughs> businesses that are allowed to sell this um, beer and wine, have some conditions where your food sales has to be right. over 50 percent. So uh, th that is a uh, you know uh, concern, or that is a, the point that uh, that you you are making, mm -hmm. and that's something that I guess uh, from our either our staff or from Starbucks we've all the time to hear how they want to achieve that. Oh, from Starbucks, how are they going to achieve that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, not, not not the question to you about. Yeah, no, it'd be interesting. I'd love to hear the answer right. to that too. Right. Thank you. <laughs> is there anything else? It, it can't be done just by seeds, though. We agree on that. <laughs> All right. You know, if I'm drinking heavily, seeds aren't going to keep me sober. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> okay, now we'll open this up to the... Uh... Uh, before we go to the, uh, the public for their uh, comments here, do you want to rebuttal to the... Uh... I'm bas I was basically just going to go over the information you have in your staff report, basically a summary of the planning hearing officer's decision. Okay. Um, I guess just some staff arguments related to the arguments presented in the actual appeal application. Why don't we hear from the staff, and then we'll go to the public. I do have the list of the 30. One of, my, one of our public people brought the list of 30, and I have the list of the 33 if you want them both. Yeah, yeah. Sure. we can do that. Sure. Um, as as you know, and you have a copy of the um, planning hearing officer's decision, they approved it with the 32 conditions. And a synopsis, a synopsis basically is that, first of all, Starbucks uh, is classified as a fast food restaurant and located in the CR zone. The reason why, again, it's a fast food restaurant based on our codes because they have more than eight seats. Um, not because necessarily have a drive through which a lot of people believe traditionally that's the way um, – fast foods should be classified. However, it's, it's only because they have more than eight seats in this case. And it's counter, as in you approach the counter, you place your order, you sit down. It's not your traditional sit down type. There's a hostess, waiter comes or waitress to your table. So again, the fast food restaurant is located in a CR zone where restaurants are allowed and they're consistent with the community slash service um, land use designation, the land use element. Serving beer and wine in conjunction with a bona fide food service is a common ancillary use for restaurants. The existing businesses or the existing business is located and will continue to be a fast food or is considered and will continue to be a fast food restaurant as condition beer and wine cannot be ordered without food. 
The addition of beer and wine service at Starbucks will only slightly increase the existing over-concentration of alcoholic service in this tract. Montrose Shopping Park has an over-concentration of, or has a concentration of retail and restaurant uses and serves as a hub for the surrounding community as a regional draw. Uh, conditional approval to serve alcoholic beverages between the hours of 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. will ensure the use will not be detrimental to the public safety. Requiring the, that beer and wine be served in glass containers directly to customers will ensure that the use will not be, again, detrimental to the public safety. Conditions of approval provided by the Glendale Police Department were included in the AUP decision letter, and those conditions will ensure that the implementation of the AUP application will not be detrimental. Starbucks, with the ability to sell, serve beer and wine for on-site consumption, will com be complementary to the current mix of uses operating in the area. And the addition of beer and wine at Starbucks should not increase to any significant degree the need for additional parking. And beer and wine must remain inside the premises or full table service would be required with the ability to maintain visual observations for those consuming in the patio area. Uh, now, regarding the appellant number one's comments, uh, again, quick synopsis, and this did consider all the conditions that they were appealing originally, so I'm I'm including everything. I'm not modifying it based on the statements made today. The appellant's arguments and request to modify the four conditions of approval uh, to staff did not appear to be unreasonable. However, these specific conditions were included to ensure that the use would not be detrimental to the public safety. And uh, during the public noticing period, Staff did receive several letters in opposition to the administrative use permit request. In addition, the planning hearing officer's decision was based on recommendations received by the Glendale Police Department as well. Ultimately, the planning hearing officer did approve the request to allow Starbucks to serve beer, uh, alcoholic beverages as an ancillary service to their primary use, which again is a fast food restaurant. The appellant contends, again, this is at the time that they submitted the appeal, that they had new evidence of material fact that was not pre previously presented that, if considered, um, could potentially change the, ter the, the, the determination that, or the ruling that was made. However, the planning hearing officer <coughs> believes that they, he had sufficient evidence in the case file to render a decision, and that included a Starbucks evening FAQ that was submitted by the applicant. They did receive the correspondence by the community and city division comments. Also, the applicant, excuse me, the planning hearing officer believes that his decision to approve the AUP request with those 32 conditions were appropriate and fair given the nature of the request, the location, and the existing use and type of service offered. Now, regarding appellant number two and their discussion and their appeal, um, the appellant alleged that the planning hearing officer exceeded their authority by approving the AUP located in, this, in the census tract, which currently exceeds the su suggested limit of on-sale alcohol establishment, and in addition contends that the planning hearing officer failed to fulfill the mandatory duty um, by, quote, neglected to notice the many children of studios of arts in the immediate area, and quote. The Montrose Shopping Park, which is where the Starbucks is located, is a pedestrian-oriented area popular for both during the day and the evening and comprised of a mix of commercial establishments, including retail services, offices and taverns, and restaurants. So Starbucks is classified as a fast food restaurant in this zone, which is allowed in the land use element and in the zoning code. So serving beer and wine in conjunction with bona fide food service is a common ancillary use for restaurants. So while the area where the subject site is located does contain more on-sale establishments than is suggested for the census tract, the addition of Starbucks would only slightly increase the over-concentration of alcoholic beverages in the census tract. Montrose Shopping Park has a concentration of retail and restaurant services and serves as a hub for the surrounding community and a regional draw. So the fact that there is an over-concentration of licenses is not an issue for the police department or neighborhood services. Typically, serving of alcoholic beverages as part of a food service does not create prob problematic situations. And similar to the other fast food establishments in the area as well, 
they have contained an approval conditional or an administrative use permit to serve alcohol. Conditions were imposed and similar to here, conditions that have been included in the decision letter for the project will ensure that the use would not be detrimental to the public safety. Starbucks at this location has operated for the past three years without adversely affecting or conflicting with the adjacent uses or impeding the normal development of the surrounding establishments and property. And again, Starbucks with the ability to sell, serve beer and wine uh, for on-site consumption will complement, be complementary to the current mix of uses operating in the area. I've included in your packet the planning hearing officer's decision letter with all the 32 conditions, again, to ensure that this particular um, request to serve beer and wine would not be detrimental to the public safety. And at this time, that would conclude my presentation. If you have any further questions, I'm available. Questions to the staff? Yeah, I, I do. And, and there was a reference made that, no, I, I believe it was Mrs. Matters Heights, that said that she was not aware of any plans that were I mean, this this falls in the North Glendale Community Plan. That uh, we just passed that about a year and a half ago, right? Two years ago. Uh, it's Three been a while. Ago? Yeah, it's 2011. <laughs> Time flies. Folks, that's what happens when you're having a lot of fun, right? <laughs> you, you lose track of time. It was three years ago. I believe it was 2011. Yeah, it was 2011. <laughs> it's more than your memory. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this was part of it. I mean, all of these things, the uses and uh, fast food and what have you, they were all part of that, uh, part of the uh, North uh, Lendl Community Plan. So there were references to that. So now the question is the following. I have a question from staff. This uh, uh, 41 license uh, and the food service, is that is there a hard and fast rule that you have to serve 50% of your gross sales have to be food related before you can sell alcohol. Is that how it works? I think it's ABC. The ABC. The ABC. But it's not part of your requirement as a city, or is it? No, that's a separate permit. And um, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, the um, police department um, representatives are here. They may be able to provide some additional information concerning uh, the ABC regulations, but they are not a, re uh, a local city requirement. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions, staff? Is the public good? It's it's open, right? Yes. Well, it's, it's been open. right now. The question is to the staff. I, I have a question. And, um, the um, shoot, I lost a thought of trend. I, I will come back to it when I remember. Uh, I <laughs> yes, Miss Nandu. Uh, I have a question. Um, it's on page two. It's um. Fourth paragraph down, according to the Glinda Police Department, the property is located in Census Track 3006, where the suggested limit of on-sale alcohol establishments is seven. Currently, there are 31 on-sale establishments in the tract. Um, so I would like to know from the Police Department uh, why they have suggested a limit of seven and why we have 31. Well, actually, 33. We just found out there is additional. Well, actually, three. we only have 31 t because two of them have been surrendered. So I checked there, and one was surrendered on the earlier one, so it was 29, and now it's 31, just FYI. Um, so t to me, that seems that our planning. Uh, master plan or even our plan for Montrose, uh, please do come up if you don't mind. You can, I'm just making a further uh, elaboration on this, is not in um, accord with the recommendations of the police department. So it, just how you base that would be Before very you helpful. Answer that, um, I do remember what I wanted to ask, and that is really related to uh, to what Commissioner Landry was I'm saying. I'm channeling him. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, and what that is is that um, of that, uh, you know, 31 locations, um, how many of that is actually fast food and how many of that is a full-service restaurant? Because beer and wine that I am associated with or I'm familiar with is really uh, 
the restaurants, sit-down restaurants where people can serve and monitor uh, the sale of alcohol rather than the takeouts and fast food type of environment. So I want to know what the uh, uh, number numbers are uh, for those. So I, I did the staff were the Glendale Police Department. I made it to defer to planning unless you have We'll check and see if we have have numbers on various types because if you look at Montrose, you're going to have a variety of uh, different types of licenses from bars to restaurants. Uh, the Type 41 that you're hearing here, you know, most commonly refers to a restaurant, and for beer and wine, and most of the and a, and a lot of restaurants <laughs> apply for those to to complement the uh, services. The limit of seven or the recommended limit of seven is not a Glendale Police Department limit. As I recall, that's actually a formula derived from state law that then determines how many should there involves averages in the countywide uh, theory in the census tract. So when we sort of evaluate these, we sort of look at the at the districts themselves, determine what kind of district they are. And then, as I said, a, a lot of our commercial areas. Uh, so if you look at downtown, if it's Montrose or Glendale, mm -hmm. you're going to find an over-concentration of alcohol. And generally, we're looking for that seems to be, a, if you're going to have an over-concentration, that seems to be Wait. the appropriate place to have it where you have dining uh, and eating establishments and uh, pubs and taverns and bars like that. And so then we evaluate each of the individual ones and determine whether what we think is appropriate and whether or not the addition would be detrimental and what conditions would then be appropriate from our perspective to mitigate any possible uh, uh, impacts to the community or, or impacts to the police department. Okay, so would you in, in the future consider revising the way that's done in a, a, I, a concentrated commercial area? I don't believe it's within my power ah. to change it. As I said, the, the number of seven does not come from the Glendale Police okay. Department. All right. It is a formula that is set out in, in the code. Okay. And so, as I said, it generally tends that most commercial areas, uh, retail eating areas, are going to have that, uh, that over-concentration because we don't set the formula for that okay. comes up with seven. All right, thank I you. I have a question. Because uh, one of the reports that was turned in uh, by the opponent number two, uh, you know, I looked at the, uh, the the period of time of this um, uh, instance related to alcohol. Uh, ten instances um, were alarmingly uh, between January to February time within a month time. And when you first um, came up and testified, you were not aware of uh, any instances related to alcohol. Uh, in that 2016 one month time, that is alarming, uh, in my opinion. So, you know, if there were instances report, you know, uh, you know, reported alcohol related uh, instance that was reported, um, you know, were you aware of this and how was this uh, taken care of? L let me clarify. You were asking the on the census tract and the, the crime related. The, the crime that is compared for state law for establishing the formulas and the over concentration talks about part one crimes. Alcohol crimes are not in part one crimes. Part one crimes are standard across the United States. As said, it's rape, robbery, aggravated assault, homicide, auto theft, petty theft, uh, Burglary, I'm miss, is, I think I'm missing one. Those are the crimes, as I said, those are ones that are used to compare cities to cities, and that's what's used for the formula. Alcohol crimes are not included in those numbers. I, I don't understand that. Uh, if we are approving alcohol-related businesses, why are we looking at alcohol-related incidences? Again, because we're referred back to state law, which then asks us to look that when you look at uh, the crime rate in a district, the crime rates are established by part one crimes. Uh -huh. Part one crimes are not alcohol. Now, when you go look at an individual licensee, let's say somebody is up for approval, can we pull alcohol-related crimes? Yes, we can. Mm. And we do. Okay, well, not to you, but maybe uh, to our staff, maybe that's some, something we need to look at whenever we issue any type of uh, approval to look at, you know, what is relevant here uh, for the businesses. Uh, not only for the, that period of time, but uh, for the... Uh, maybe a year, going back two years, and take a look at that. Uh, because I think it is very significant how that is affecting the neighborhood. My suggestion. Okay. Well, I guess that's why they call it conditional use permit or AUP, because you can pull it if it becomes egregiously overbearing. Um, so Correct. And we're not, we don't set the formula for determining the over-concentration. There is a, a set process we have to right. go through, and so that's part one crime. So what they're really looking at is, do we have an area that is 
above the average in terms of criminal activity, mm -hmm. they don't have us pull part ones. For example, I guess hypothetically, if you were to have your first alcohol establishment going into an area, you would have no history anywhere to, to really look at. But when we do go in for renewals, uh, then Alcoholic Beverage Control and ourselves look at the business and we look at all calls for service to the police from for the police services to that particular business. I see. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to clarify. There was a comment earlier, I believe it was made by a board member, Commissioner Astorian, regarding if there was something in our municipal code related to if 50% uh, of gross revenues from the sale of alcoholic beverages exists, and it does. Um, and that's actually based on the definition of what a tavern is. So I'd like to just read it just for clarification. Um, tavern means any establishment that primarily provides for the on-premises on sale, serving and consumption of alcoholic beverages, and that derives more than 50% of gross revenues from the sale of alcoholic beverages. Taverns include bars, pubs, cocktail lounges, and similar establishments, but do not include nightclubs. So if, for example, a particular establishment does derive more than 50% of their gross revenue sales specifically related to alcohol, it, it totally changes the use. They do ultimately become a tavern. Okay, thank you. So we do have a similar law as that of the state, and I'm, I'm really wondering how uh, Starbucks is going to come up with the receipt. That. Well, that's because Starbucks is not a tavern. It's it's under fast food, if I'm not wrong, right? Yes, but, that is correct. So it's not categorized under taverns. So theoretically, they can't be uh, they can't be selling over fifty percent. They have to be under it. I think. Correct, based on that definition. Yes. Which poses an interesting uh, question. I mean, so is Carl's Jr. So is Burger King. I, I'm just putting it out, that's all. All right, now we'll go to the public comments. I'd like to invite Mr. Grant Michaels to the podium. You have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Grant Michaels. I'm the president of the Montrose for Zuguna City Spar Heights Neighborhood Association. We commented on the initial CUP when Starbucks opened. It opened as a fast food restaurant and under the CUP with a parking variance, the conditions were granted for the small nature of their, so of their store. They said the nature of their business is fast food takeaway and that it would promote walking traffic within the shopping park. They use that to justify the parking reduction. They said their busiest times would be in the mornings when most of the shopping park is not open. So we spoke to the CUP to those concerns. Our concerns about the AUP for on-site alcohol sales are addressing, focusing mainly on that fast food business model and the initial CUP that it was open under. Having an evenings program they are obviously trying to have another busy period during the time in the shopping park when the restaurants and the shopping park is open. That calls into question the parking variance that is still in effect and was mentioned as being one of the entitlements right now. Our concerns are focused mainly around that with the small size and the ability for patrons to have a table. In a traditional restaurant, you won't be served until you have a table. In a fast food restaurant, you go to the counter, are served, and then have to find a table. Our concerns are mainly about the size and the capacity of this location. If tables aren't available, if you have coffee, you will wander out into the shopping village. If a table isn't available and you have ordered alcohol, how do you you can tend to have a table provided when all of them are full. Those are the center of our concerns, and as we expected through going through this process, there would be more clarity with the two different appeals, one from Starbucks looking to have the conditions that were set by the hearing officer lessened, the appeal from the community saying we want the alcohol sales to stop, 
We aren't seeing that clarity come through with this case. At this time, we think this is more of an experiment, and the Montrose location is not exactly the best place to have this experiment for a small fast food restaurant okay. to function in as densely populated, as heavily traveled an area as the shopping village. Okay. We recommend that you consider our comments, comments of Starbucks, the rest of the community, look to resolve all of these conditions, but at this time, we support the appeal by Ms. Masterstick. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, we have Mr. Mohill. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Mike Mohill. Has anybody in this room ever heard of the organization called Prom Plus? Anybody in this room belong to it? Tender function. You know what it's all about? Anybody on the commissioners? Yes, Mr. Moore. Thank we you. Do. So you might. Do we proceed. know why they why they came about? It wasn't because of a good time. It was because of children that were killed, and that organization started grassroots. They said, no more. We want our kids to be exposed to alcohol. And what can we do to stop it? And a bunch of local people got together and started an organization called Prom Plus. It's been very, very successful. Thank you. But by having Starbucks have alcohol now, the message you were giving to the kids up in the Montrose area is, it's okay to drink. In fact, I remember the Park Commission even allowed drinking on our parks. Why are we encouraging alcohol? More people die from alcohol than gunshots every day. That's the number one weapon, DUI. Another thing is parking. I remember when Starbucks initially applied for their permission there, and I remember the argument was, hey, no problem, be a fast turnover. And I said, you know what, I was in between supporting them or not supporting them, but I said, you know what, it'll be, good for, it'll be a good fit. It's a, it's a well-known establishment, it'll help generate business. But now they've taken the next step. You know, you give them a finger, they want the hand, then they want the hand, they want the arm, and then the whole body. When do we want to stop? Think of what the message you are saying. Thank you. My number is my time self. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may, I, may I make a comment now? Just wait. Uh, why don't we wait? Marine Palacios. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Maureen Palacios, and I'm a concerned parent who owns Once Upon a Time Bookstore in the 2200 block. Uh, we are a long-standing business, uh, 50 years this year in the Sh Montrose Shopping Park. I disagree with the city's uh, findings and approval of the AUP because of the inconsistent application of facts and the city not following its own conclusions. I disagree in having this particular Starbucks allowed to have the evening's program. I am not against an evening's program, but just this particular location as it's not a good fit. <clears throat> it is not needed or wanted as you can see from some of the petitions that have been given to you. On page 2B of the AUP, the city did not follow its own conclusions. It's, it, quote, the area, as we've said this, the area contains more on-site uh, establishments that's suggested for the census track. The addition of Starbucks will only slightly increase this over-concentration of alcoholic service in the track, which means it's not needed. When the city cites in both B and C regarding adverse impact, 
<clears throat> they mention, and they're asking, are there any daycare facilities, public parks, schools, and libraries? Well, that suggests the safety and impact on children is being considered when a determination is made. However, having the Starbucks steps away from the thousands of underage children during the exact time this program is operating would adversely impact children, as alcohol itself is proven to be harmful. Are we now trying to encourage parents to imbibe at Starbucks, then pick up children after dance class, karate book club, art, or drive home? Hey, it was only a couple of glasses at Starbucks, right? And B, mentioning the mix of businesses, of retail services, offices, and restaurants. Didn't the city realize that there's a high concentration of businesses that cater to children for after-school activities? There are 18 child-centered businesses, three in the 2400 block, Bellies, Babies, and Bosoms, Grayson's Toontown for Children's Music Lessons, Kung Fu and Tai Chi. There are seven in the 2300 block. Takes a Village, Children's Clothes, Montrose Candy Company, Bubble Cut Kids, Froyo, Paradise, Fred Villari's Studio of Self-Defense, Helen's Dance Studio. There are eight in the exact block of Starbucks, 2200 block, Color Me Mine, OV Board Sports, Kids Art, Once Upon a Time, Revolution Dance Center, Tom's Toys, Master Taekwondo. My goodness, there's so many children's centered businesses. Using the existing coffee shop calls for police services is incorrect. Since Starbucks wants to be a bar because they want to serve papitas, and that, then you should be asking what the bar things are, not what the coffee shop, how many, how many um, police calls. In conclusion, Starbucks wants its evening program. Well, people want in jail, want out. Just because they want it doesn't mean the community wants it too. It's okay. not needed. I have a question from the speaker. Yes. Ma'am, uh, so is, if this was a regular sit-down restaurant, you would not have had any problems with them serving alcohol? Because I'm right next to Zeke's and have been with, with Rocky Cola and have been and now with Benny Trois. <coughs> so I have no trouble because it's a sit-down restaurant. Thank this you. is a bar that they're trying to be. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No, since we have many speakers uh, still uh, to be heard from, uh, if commissioners can hold their comments or questions till the end of the uh, end of this is this is not. If you want to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next speaker is Randy Foster. Thank you. My name is Randy Foster, and I am pastor of Christian Life Church in La Crescenta, a church that's been in the community for 94 years. Uh, I'm connected with many of the pastors and churches in the community. Uh, we meet on a somewhat regular basis, and the discussion of Starbucks and the inclusion of beer and wine at that location has been a, a topic of conversation. I spend at least two hours a day at that Starbucks. I study there, prepare my messages, I meet with parishioners, with community leaders. Uh, I love that Starbucks. Uh, good friends with most of the baristas and former manager Joe. Um, I, I just I enjoy that site. My concern is uh, twofold. Number one, uh, there are community people who I've talked with there that say if they include that, the alcohol, they will no, no longer go there uh, because it creates an atmosphere that they don't want to be a part of. Secondly, I'm concerned because if you go in there from 3.30 in the afternoon when school is out to early evening, 9, sometimes 10 o'clock at night, you can't get in there. You can't sit down. And it's not because adults are mingling after having coffee after they've had uh, dinner at a local restaurant. It's primarily because students are in there having groups of, of study sessions and there's laptops out all over the place. Many parents drop their children off there because it's a safe place. They're not concerned about it. And I am, I just, I, the fact that it's a family community has already been mentioned. Um, I, think, I think we have enough places in Montrose that people can sit down, have a beer, have a glass of wine, have a meal, and uh, Starbucks doesn't need to be another one of them. 
Thank you. Next speaker is Robin Vasari. Lewis. Hello, my name is Robin Basaria Lewis, and I've been a um, resident of Glendale for over 18 years now. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I'm also um, had previously been a catering sales manager at UCLA for over 23 years. <laughs> so I know a little bit about um, food and beverage and a little bit about hospitality services. Um, I had first heard about uh, the Starbucks trying to apply for their alcohol license because it was a posting and also was a follow-up um, Crescenta Valley uh, editor, uh, letters to the editor on the 25th of um, February, which I caught sight of. And I thought, well, well I want to know what the hubbub is all about. I wasn't sure why there was any kind of um, opposition to it, so I decided to go out to the, the evening's program. The closest one I could find was in Pasadena. And I made some observations about... Um, you know, the um, protocol, the procedures, the policies, how it was all going to unfold as a customer there. I noted about 18 to 20 people there. It was about mm, 6 o'clock at night, spent about 45 minutes to an hour, and you're just making observations. And I really personally, from my own experience, didn't see anything untoward. Um, they even carded my husband, who was well into his 60s. <laughs> um, and there wasn't, um, in terms of the display to promote the evening's program, there, it isn't a bar in the least. There's no separate area for that. It's just one long counter. There was a nice display case with the small plate items, which were appetizers for the wine and beer that was going to be offered. Um, I looked around after placing our order for uh, a beer. I think it was about $6. And we got some flatbreads. And we were told to go to a table. And we were served there. Uh, in glassware and plates. But I wanted to say, well, you know, this is a delicious experience. I wanted to know if anybody else is partaking of a similar kind of thing. And no, most people were busy with their laptops, their books, their newspapers, down in coffees. I think I spotted one glass of beer. I had gone back. I said, well, what's it like here? I don't see that there's a thriving business and request for um, alcohol. He goes, well, you know what? It usually happens usually over the weekends, but even so... Primarily, the beverage requested is, is non-alcoholic in nature. Um, uh, the range, the age range of those patrons in the um, establishment at that time would have been 10 years of age, all the way up to 60 or so. Um, again, I, from, from a consumer standpoint, I don't see any problem with it. I know there's a coffee bean and tea leaf <coughs> right across the street on the same side, on the adjacent corner where I see similar patrons enjoying their non-alcoholic hot beverages and frappes and, and during the summertime, nice mixed uh, coffee beverages. But I, I, would, I would encourage people here to do their, their research and investigation and maybe firsthand go into one of these, these establishments with the evening programs in full swing and observe and see what, what, what you note that might be of a concern. Because I... At, I I like choice, personally, from, from a person who goes to Montrose Shopping Park a lot. And um, I would welcome this particular aspect to their menu, because I know they have to be competitive. Thank You've got you. coffee bean, and I want another choice. So Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is, um, oh, so, so. is it Jesse Shelton? Hi. Um, so we're all we all go to CV, um, and just from hearing it, we didn't really know what was going on, whether they're going to have alcohol or not. But just my personal opinion, um, go there a lot. Starbucks is kind of a main place that a lot of the kids go. It is true you can't really find a seat because everyone is studying, everybody's you know like using their computers and whatnot. But I think that adding alcohol, it would just kind of be annoying to deal with because then you would have even more people going there which is good but then some people might drink a little too much or you know we have events in Montrose all the time so we're we're prom plus also so we have to clean up after that and I think that if 
we have so many other places with alcohol that if you really, really want it, you can go to the bar. I mean, I don't think you can take it around Montrose either. So I think having one kid place that you can go and know that you're you're fine, you'll be okay, and it's not really like a danger thing, but just that everybody there is like mentally there, I think that's pretty important. Um, I'm Brandon Budwig. Uh, I'm recruitment for Prom Plus, um, and I have uh, was raised here. I'm 17 and a half. I'm actually not even an adult yet, so I'm not done being raised. Um, <laughs> but my thing, this, this, I believe, is my home. I know the streets. I have been everywhere here. Um, Montrose Park, uh, that is used to where I used to swing. That's where I used to barbecue with my parents. We understand what swing means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. But um, I just came to say that um, here I'm a junior in high school, and there are kids out there uh, that would jump at the opportunity of this for one reason, and that is because they are sneaky. Um, there are always ways, and um, alcohol is one of the biggest things that teenagers sometimes think of. It's a big topic. Uh, I actually talked to a couple of kids, and as soon as they heard that Starbucks might be serving alcohol, they uh, got a little excited, which is not a good thing. But the point is, is not having it uh, won't technically make it better. There, there is still kids that will find ways, but by adding it, you're just adding to the problem. There's more ways, and for our youth, <laughs> me, and my peers, um, I don't think it's for the best, and I think we need to focus on something better. Thank you, Brendan. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does Brendan have to fill out a separate card or, or part of the... Uh... I have a card. Oh, okay. Why don't you, why don't you just, oh, just bring it up. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Cute. Oops. Angelique Duke. Sure. Angelique Duke. Sure. I pause if I put your, na put your name. Angelique Duke. Hi, everyone. Thank you. My name is Angelique Duke Shervanian, and I am the Director of Action Family Counseling. And we have a location in Pasadena, and we have a bunch of locations all throughout Southern California. The one in Pasadena has been there for the last 12 years, and we serve the Pasadena area as well as the Glendale, La Cañada, La Crescenta, and Montrose areas. Um, right now, I have 33 children in my rehab, and uh, 27 of them are from the Glendale, La Cañada, La Crescenta, Montrose area. Um, last month, I had a 14-year-old that uh, obtained her alcohol from the Pasadena Starbucks location. She said that uh, what she did was, um, like Brandon said, kids can be sneaky. And there was some alcohol uh, that was left out, and she was able to pour the alcohol into her coffee uh, that someone left on their table that hardly looked drinking. Um, when I asked her if she can be here tonight, she said yes. She jumped at the chance, but mom said no. Mm -hmm. So, and I totally understand that because there's a lot of community members here, and she doesn't want her child to be judged. And I understand that. Um, then I went ahead and called and talked to uh, the 33 kids that are currently in my program uh, that, are, that are 18 and under. And uh, I asked them what they thought about the Starbucks being um, in their area. And um, the biggest thing that came up was that it's going to be a big trigger for them. Um, everywhere these kids go nowadays, alcohol and drugs are around. School home, and Starbucks, coffee places where they go study should be their one safe place. Their one safe place. When you go to a restaurant and, you know, they're serving alcohol and someone wants to party a little bit extra other than just having one drink with their meal, they go over to the bar area. 
And Starbucks doesn't have that, that I know of. It's all in one place. Everyone's sitting around in one place. And, you know, that's just not okay. Um, I don't want to take my little guy to Starbucks if people are going to be drinking there. And um, if any of you guys have a, a little one, I'm sure you wouldn't either. Um, if it's, you don't know if people are getting out of line or not. And um, when children speak up, we need to listen. You know, I even asked him, what do you think about that? Because he knows what mommy does for a living. I've been doing this for the last 18 years. And he said, no, mommy, not a good idea. You know, more people die from alcohol-related deaths than all other drugs combined. Combined. So I don't think it's a great idea, and I'm opposed to it, and so is everybody at our location. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have our last speaker, uh, Ruth Tatum. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you. I, um, my name is Ruth, and I live about a blo uh, two blocks. I live at um, Broadview and Downing. Um, so a couple of things on the Starbucks. I, um, first, I'm going to talk what a lot of community members talked about, the parking. When Starbucks first applied for the license, um, I was opposed to the parking then. I'm opposed to it now. 44% of their seating doesn't require parking. That's 18 of the outside. They have 23 inside. You can do the math. And so part of it was what everyone talked about. People be walking to it. They'll be in and out. And now it's a change in business plan, right? Their company, they're allowed to change their business plan. But also as a community, we're allowed to vote. And I don't think the first time it was approved, there was a lot of community input. And as you can tell tonight, there's not a lot in favor of it just because of what people said. And I'm not going to do the whole repeat. It's oversaturated. There are way too many kids in there. They're 10 years old. They're 11 years old. They're 12 years old. I get kids are exposed to alcohol everywhere. Could there be three places of Montrose that are not exposed to it? Froyo, Coffee Bean, and Starbucks. And, you know, as a community, what are you going to do when Coffee Bean decides to ask for a license? How do you say yes to one and not to the other? And then the whole zoning on fast food. When it was first approved, there were people in the community that thought the fast food classification was a slippery slope. And it's come back tonight. Oh, it's a fast food place. So, of course, you know, they can have alcohol because that's how we've classified them. Well, you classified them that way. You can also interpret that classification that benefits the community. Um, so that's all I have to say. I hope you really consider what everyone has talked about tonight. A lot of people came out to address this issue. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any more speaker cards. Um, so if there are no more speakers, I'd like to open any questions from the uh, commissioners uh, to some of the speakers, if you have any. Now is the time people go to a rebuttal. I, I, I have a question from, is it Mr. Blassman, if I may? Being in the business of real estate, especially in leasing end of it, commercial leasing end of it for many, many years, I understand that tenants, especially of the stature of Starbucks, have demographics. You should have demographics for this particular uh, location. Can you share some of that demographics with me as far as age and most of the time that is frequented and so forth? I don't have the personal de uh, data on that, but maybe one of our, our uh, Starbucks managers might. But I know when you say demographics, why it was originally selected or what, uh, what, uh, what, what sort the, of your, 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 ratio of people coming in? Right. Your, your, okay. your, your clientele, your customers, oh. you keep oh. uh, track of them, obviously as to age and preferences and so forth. I'm just trying to get yeah, an understanding of what you think <coughs> the average age is. Mostly adult, but I would all it. Tim Douglas, district manager for Starbucks Coffee. So demographics for the Montrose um, location and for most Starbucks in, in the Los Angeles market is, is female customers aged between 18 and 33 years old. That's, that's the bulk of our business. Um, 
mantra specifically meets meets that. All, all stores have children. All restaurants have children that, that come in them. Um, we value all our customers. And this is just really about making a product offer available for a legal person who would like to take place, who, who would like it. It's not going to be a bar. That is not our intention. Thank you. Thank you. What could I ask uh, Mr. Douglas or Mr. Glassman? Um, what is your percentage of sales of drinks and what is your percentage of sales of food? At, at this location? Yes. Or, or correct? This location. Um, we, we sell between 25 to 30 percent of our total revenue is, is food, and the rest is beverage, which makes up espresso, mm -hmm. drip coffee, and our frappuccinos, iced tea, iced coffee, et cetera. Full it's disclosure, I'm, I'm a, a star card holder. Yes. Uh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your patronage. <laughs> Bonus stars. But are I'm not an addict. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Commissioner Manuka, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Uh, to any Thank other you. speakers. Then we'll go back. Yes. Um, if you're looking for the order for rebuttal, mm -hmm. it would be the neighbor applicant or neighbor appellant followed by the applicant appellant. Uh, so we'll do a switch loo here. Switch okay. Yeah, so. Appellant number two, uh, which is a neighbor, uh, you have first rebuttal. Yes. Five, you have five minutes. For my rebuttal? Yes. Well, my rebuttal would be, first of all, I heard recently that there's an acquisition going in for Burger King. Um, you guys took over the Burger King on Foothill. That's a nice lounge size for probably a perhaps fit of the evening's program. I just heard last night that there's an acquisition um, underway, or per perhaps it's even successfully occurred for the Starbucks to take over the Carl's Jr. right around the corner. So um, that's a fairly large size when Mr. Glassman, I, I believe who is a consultant actually, not actually works for Starbucks. Um, but that would be a lounge size. But I would also encourage that Starbucks does not try to penetrate our area. We are obviously a very compelled, compassionate you know, embracing our community, whether it be young people or just the respect for our community at large. Again, we are seven, four times over the census, or, or we're four times over in how many alcohol locations we are supposed to have. That's insane. We need to have some responsibility. Put it on hold. Stop this business, the shenanigans. Get rid of these DUIs that are happening once a week. And, and let's be responsible. Take care of our community. Let's take care of each other. That would be my, my compelling. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Open the moment, class. You have a five minutes rebuttal time. Um, sure. I, I, you know, I, I appreciate the, the community for coming out and expressing the concerns and passion. And I wanted you to know, Starbucks shares these same concerns. You know, I have grandchildren. I have children. Um, you know, as even as a consultant, I, I don't want to have any harm come to children at Starbucks. And I think what everyone's discussing, and I'm, I want to address you too, uh, and the community. Right. Yeah, can you speak closer to the mic? Yes. Yeah. Um, what I want to address for everyone is that what we're hearing tonight is a, is a lot of fear. And I'm feeling it too. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, it's the unknown, it's Starbucks. But we've had these stores, 52 of them in California, 238 across the, across the country, operate with kids, teens, families coming in. And in order to really tell you the, this is a really fractional, incidental nature of this, is you can imagine we're adding a couple menu items. We're not a bar, and we don't, have, we don't intend to be a bar. So when kids come in to do their homework, um, we, we embrace that. We want kids to continue to come, families to come. We don't want to repel anyone from this program. It's strictly to have, a, it's, it ends up being a really a net, a menu offering. And it's, uh, you know, Starbucks is actually for adults as well. So if I'm going to go in with my wife in the evening, and I might even have my grandchildren with me, and I decide, hey, I want to try one of the craft beers. I want to try a Stone IPA, and the kids are having Kitty Cocoa. We're a family. We're there. Um, we don't want to repel any kids or teens because that is a, it's a great place for them to feel safe. 
And I think, even even hearing the kids tonight, I think they're going to remain safe. What's happening tonight is a sense of fear. Once, now I want you to imagine you prove this tonight, and you prove it with our modified conditions. A year from now, I can guarantee all of your fears are going to be nothing. No, I, I'm serious. Yeah. Sir, you need to address to you, the please. planning commission. I wanna, I wanna sure, you're at the planning yeah, commission. I want to I wanna address the community, too, because I feel, I feel compelled to. I mean, I'm addressing the planning commission. But after Starbucks operates, uh, uh, we can do this as a conditional. It's a revocable permit, like you said. It's ABC can revoke it. You can revoke it. We want to have the opportunity to demonstrate that we can do this successfully, as we've done for all the stores in California. I know there's a lot of compassion and a lot of passion about this, but we feel passionate about the fact that we would like the opportunity to prove ourselves, and that's what we're asking. We're asking for, if you approve us tonight, you have the opportunity to do a look back, not in three years, not in two years, immediately. You could do it in, in any, any segment of time you want. But what I'd like to see happen is Starbucks be approved and then have the proof in the pudding is that Starbucks has not changed. The kids are safe, the kids come, and there's no issue. And that's really the incidental nature of this. It's a menu item. Uh, kids go to, you know, Chuck E. Cheese serves beer and wine. Uh, Disneyland Adventure serves beer and wine. And this is a family-oriented, these are all family-oriented, even uh, Chipotle. So it, Starbucks is not the place where people are going to come and indulge and get drunk. It's just not. It's just the price points and the reason for behind this is to have an experience, to pair a beer or wine, an ice wine with a, you know, a, a Cabernet with a, with a flatbread, um, as, as one of the uh, folks spoke. It's really to experience this. And, and I, I can talk all night about what Starbucks is, but unless you experience it, unless you see what happens at Pasadena, and I'm not sure about this one lady mentioning someone taking a leftover beer, but you know, the Starbucks per personnel, if someone leaves and they're not, uh, they have not finished their beer, Starbucks people are on top of that. So whatever happened, that was, it was very, uh, a very unusual. I've never heard of any incidents like that. But I can assure you that would be um, virtually uh, a non-issue at all of our Starbucks stores and that we haven't had that issue. Um, I, I want to ask that, you know, with all these situations, I want to suggest that you give Starbucks a chance to prove itself. And in that, and I can answer any other questions you might have. Any questions? Not from. Not to me. Thank you. I appreciate. I have a question. Uh, I, maybe the staff can answer that too. What is the length of our approval on this AUP? It was approved for three years. Three years. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, Follow-up question: uh, Can we have it for one year instead of three? Yes, you can. All right. Okay, um, if we do not have any more comments or questions for the public or for the staff, then I'm going to close the public hearing. And let's go into deliberation. You want to sure. uh, for, uh, for the record, we are deliberating on the, the neighbor's uh, appeal first, right? And then we're going to see if there is a motion to be made. And then we're going to move on to Starbucks. Um, because if if we right. if we entertain the appeal, and if we deny, uh, right, yeah, the point is mute. Yeah, right. it's cutting the Gordian knot. We, you know, it's, it's, can I think you made a point. I think yeah. Let's uh, let's go with the uh, appeal number two. Rube Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> appeal. <laughs> second second appeal. So right. would you like to start? Oh me? Yes. <laughs> um, I can start if oh, you want. Yeah, well, yeah. Age before Gordian. Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> So thank you for uh, all of you, including Starbucks personnel, Mr. Glass and Mr. Douglas, the community, and of course our Deputy Chief uh, Police uh, as well. We thank you all for attending. Here is the dilemma. All along, sitting here, I've been trying to reconcile the concerns of the community with the interests of the business. To some extent, that is achievable. But like anything else, there is a risk in it. You see, the reason that I brought up the idea of Cars Jr. or Burger King is because they are classified as uh, fast food restaurants. What is it to tell me or to, te to say that tomorrow they will not apply for and be afforded a 
a conditional use permit or an administrative use permit to serve alcohol, seemingly innocuous beer and wine. The problem, and, and this is why I asked the questions that I, I was asking from the community, the problem is not serving beer and wine. It's the nature of the business that, in their opinion, does not uh, mash with serving beer and wine because it attracts a lot of younger kids. And I tend to believe that because my kids, well, there are no kids no more, but <laughs> they're over 20 now. But when they were 17 and, six, and 17 and 18, they were frequenting the uh, Starbucks. And what, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting, by the way, I would be suggesting unequivocally for any fast food restaurant or even the coffee beans across the street. So, you know, when I looked at your conditions, again, these are conditions that can be adjusted, tweaked, this and that. But it does not address the nature of the business. This is a business that attracts a lot of young kids. The reason that I ask you about the demographics, I understand that that's the demographics, but in, in reality, I know that a lot of young kids uh, patronize the, the, the business. So I have an issue with that. Now, if I want to get really technical, and if you look at your page two of, um, actually, page four of the staff report, just on that one condition, condition number one, when I can basically not find, not make the findings and deny the application, if I want to get really technical. But the truth of the matter is that I, even with one year um, CUP or AUP, I will be uncomfortable with Starbucks, with Starbucks at Montrose. If this was in downtown Glendale, any one of the Starbucks, there is one of them, I believe. I would not have had any issues with that. <coughs> that's a business, that's a really uh, business uh, um, section that, you know, you got all, all, all kinds of office buildings around and so on, and it's not frequented by 14, 15 year olds. So with that, I think you know where I'm headed. Yes, thank you. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Um, I think I'm having the same type of uh, trouble with this uh, as my colleague. Um, I have nothing against alcohol, God knows. Uh, and we already have, what, 32? 31. 31 establishments of alcohol uh, that serve alcohol in the area. The problem is the location of this particular establishment because of where it is the way the store is situated how porous it is I really do worry about uh, who it's going to attract what they're going to do there and again it being a Starbucks I hate to say it you're a victim to your own success a lot of young people use Starbucks as their secondary office uh, or, you know, if you think that their bedroom is their first office. So it's a point of congregation. Now you're adding this element to it. Uh, and it, and again, I do this from time to time. I editorialize. The job of this commission is to reconcile the interests of the property owner and the community. And if I see that, what I'm denying is not as bad as, to the property owner as, you know, um, the good it does the community. I will deny it. I hate to do it. Nobody likes to say no, but sometimes you have to. Because there are interests that need to be reconciled. And uh, I think... In my mind, in this circumstance, they need to be reconciled in favor of the community. And with that, Commissioner Andrigan? Um Well, first, I would like to say I was very impressed with Jesse and Brandon. I'm, I'm always delighted to see civic involvement of young individuals at an early age. And uh, so that was very brave of them. I know how hard it is to appear in front of a bunch of old folks and uh, <laughs> no, even though swinging. we may understand swinging but uh, 
I just, I just thought that was extremely brave and important. Um, I also would like to say that um, I, um, I think much of what my uh, fellow commissioners have said is very important. I, I think there are, are good places to have uh, Starbucks in the evenings, and I've seen them. I think the size of this uh, establishment, I went in there several times this weekend just to feel the space again. And um, I, I have to say, I really think it does not meet what I saw in other evening Starbucks as an area where I think you could really monitor and understand uh, what's happening because it's really a, a thriving Starbucks and it's a very successful one and, and thankfully so. Um, I, I think the definition of a, a, a license uh, 41 really clearly, you know, whether it's an ABC requirement um, is a trouble, troubling uh, uh, line there that is being possessed. A fast food restaurant, to me, uh, I think that does push the envelope, and we have to look at setting precedent and not allowing a precedent to be set. And to me, a sit-down restaurant meets that litmus test, and a fast food restaurant doesn't, even though it is incidental. And I don't think there's anything wrong with what the uh, planning carrying officer did. I think there was a very fine um, uh, set of conditions that were intended to meet all of the needs of the community and, and the needs of our code, which allows this. But because I believe that oversaturation of alcoholic uh, establishments, oversaturation also can be interpreted as drunk, um, I believe that we have no limit on what is a little more. And I think that uh, as long as we keep it within sit-down establishment, I think that the, the oversaturation has some controls on it that are already existing. But when you go into the fast food area, I don't think we have those controls. And, and, and to, for our community to go there, I have grave concerns. I also believe the parking needs for a drinking establishment, whether it is just beer and wine, is vastly different than the parking requirements for a takeaway coffee or breakfast place. And I think that looking at the variance that we allowed there, uh, the conditional use permit, um, makes me hesitant that it would be expandable to both the CUP and the AUP. And for those reasons, I totally concur with where I believe my fellow commissioners are going is that um, this is a great program, this is not the right place for it in Montrose. Thank you. You know, I, I've seen uh, other uh, evening uh, program places, not Starbucks, but the Art Cove in Los Angeles, in Los Feliz area, uh, that is very successful uh, with having the bar and also being the uh, uh, the coffee and tea serving place. But in the restaurant, you do not find teenagers or other uh, people that who might be exposed to this issue because that they started out with that type of program from the beginning. As you heard from the other commissioners, this is a wrong fit. And what I have most problems with is that I don't think you have any way to really control uh, the sales of alcohol on site consumption uh, when you sell these products. Because I've been there many times. I've, I've used that Starbucks coffee and coffee bean. And often I had to walk out because there were, there were no seating. Uh, and there were many students there uh, occupying the spaces. Simply put, it's just wrong fit. Um, you know, you may come before us again for some other locations. We may have to look at it uh, at that time. But in this case, I concur with my other fellow commissioners that you know I'm, I feel very uncomfortable. 
very, very uncomfortable with this case. So with this, um, if, uh, you know, Commissioner uh, is ready to make the motion and we get support, then really makes the other appeal, uh, appeal and the whole case mute anyway. So uh, can we? Uh, whoever wants to make the motion, it's okay with you. With your permission, there was a comment made, and I have to address this because mm -hmm. It's a, it's a family honor type of a thing. Uh, uh, what's the French word for it? Noblesse oblige. No, noblesse oblige, okay. So there was a common mandate that we allow alcohol use in our parks. It is true, but that is by license and only in case of events. When you have events, special events, special events that's when it's, uh, it's, it's allowed for beer and wine. It's not that you can go to the park and open a can of brewski and sit down and enjoy and for, for somebody not to tell on you, basically. So I just wanted to make the correction. Thank you for the clarification, Commissioner. So who is ready to make the motion? I can. Do you want to? I can't. So open this. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I hereby move that upon review and consideration of all uh, materials and exhibits of current record relative to administrative use permit case number PAUP 1518910, located at 2284 Honolulu Avenue, and, have, and after having conducted an appeal hearing on said matter, that the Planning Commission hereby reverse the Planning Hearing Officer's decision and deny said administrative use Permit case number PAUP 1518910 in accord with revised findings and conditions. Um, excuse me. There, there, we there, do are two, not there are two motions. This is the one that denies it. Right, but we would need to return, you would need to direct us to return with uh, <coughs> findings. findings for denial. We do not have findings for denial included in your packet. So you so could just so return. Would need to, yeah. You would your direction would include returning have to such, staff with such motion includes the returning of these findings to city staff to make the necessary findings for the denial. Return. Yeah, and we will return, return. return to Who you will with the, those findings. Thereupon, return it to us for a final <laughs> approval. Yes. Thank you. Support. I second. Second. So we have motion and a support. Roll call, please. Planning Commissioner Historian. Yes. Landrigan. Aye. Manukian. Aye. Chairperson Lee. Aye. <laughs> With a vote of four to zero, uh, the, this case has been reversed and denied. Next item, uh, planning commissioner comments. Uh, I'm planning commissioner items. No. Yes, I have yeah. a, a comment that I would like to make. We had a speaker who was the owner of the Once Upon a Time. I want to personally thank you because you sponsored my U5 soccer team <laughs> over the last year's AYSO uh, season. Thank you. Maureen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any department updates? Um, yes, we do. At the last uh, city council meeting, um, we had an appointment for a new we planning ask you commission. to please take your conversations out? Um, so, uh, Talene Shabazian will be the new commissioner. She was appointed um, by the commission. She will be taking a seat appointment for our Nazarian and um, oh, Najarian. Najarian. And um, she will be starting on the 16th. Excellent. We welcome yeah. her. Thank you. All right. So if uh, any more uh, comments from commissioners, uh, then are you entertained? Move to adjourn. Okay. Thank so you. Moved.